Yes, so welcome back. Shurbhata uh, Das of uh, Presidency University will be speaking on small consideration theory. Yeah. Please start. Can you hear me, Shurbhata? Oh, okay, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so continuing from yesterday's lecture, uh, let us briefly do a recap <clears throat> that uh, by this notation we meant uh, G has a presentation with generating set S and R, which means this. A word is freely reduced if uh, it doesn't have subwords like this. Cyclically reduced if cyclic permutations are reduced. Symmetrized if you have all cyclic permutations of elements in R and its inverses. And something uh, subword uh, you call a piece if this thing happens. If you have distinct elements from the symmetrized R such that they appear into distinct such versions. <clears throat> And you call uh, diagram. Yes, yes. Can you make the screen? I mean, subsequently large and small because the font is very small. Oh, is it? Uh, let yeah, me. Or you can go one screen to the other. Is it, uh, is it better? Uh, it's a bit better, but if you can make it large, then it is. Uh, how is how about this? It's fine now. It's fine. Okay. So this is fine, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so a piece is uh, a subword which appears in two different. Uh, elements of the symmetrized R in this manner as a prefix. And uh, given a relator, by relator we mean something which is a which is an element of the normalizer of uh, relations. So if we have uh, any <coughs> word W like that, then uh, we have something called a Van Kampen diagram corresponding to that, where uh, the object M, the diagram, that is a simply connected to complex uh, whose boundary is P and the level of the boundary, F is the labeling map and uh, the level of the boundary is W. Okay, so now Let's recall these were the small cancellation conditions which we introduced yesterday. And uh, this is the <clears throat> matrix small cancellation condition, which says that the pieces are small, I mean, pieces are lambda small, you can say, compared to the length of the relators. And uh, mostly we will we will stick to this notion of small cancellation for the future discussion. Mostly, we will also talk about, uh, talk a bit about <coughs> CP and TQ conditions for certain PQs uh, having CP and TQ together, mostly for today's talk and uh, for tomorrow and day after, I think we will mostly focus on this metric small cancellation condition. So the metric condition is like this and what is CP? Uh, it, is, it says that uh, no element of your, no relator is a product of less than P pieces. That means uh, you have at least P pieces in all of your relators, right? So another way of putting it is every interior face of a Van Kampen diagram uh, has at least P sides. And we have seen, seen this last time, that why it happens like that. Okay. And uh, presentation SR satisfies 
TQ condition if uh, we can say that all interior vertices of Van Kampen diagram has degree greater than or equal to Q. And we also have seen this uh, justification for this previous lecture. Okay, <clears throat> so now coming back, coming to today's uh, topic. Today we will we will mostly be concerned with something called a curvature formula. I will uh, I will briefly sketch the details of the proof for three different uh, situations. We will <clears throat> have to analyze the formula, and then we get a we get one formula, one inequality, which we call the curvature formula for uh, certain small cancellation groups, presentations. Uh, the detail will be done in the tutorial. And then we will talk about something called the Greenlinger's lemma, which is possibly the most important result in this, uh, in this area, because it, uh, it facilitates something called a dense algorithm, which we will also see today. And, <clears throat> and uh, the other thing we will see is linear isoperimetric inequality. Uh, linear isoperimetric inequality is uh, what it gives one of the equivalent definitions for Gromov hyperbolic groups. So we will not go into the proof of this fact that linear isoperimetric inequality gives uh, room of hyperbolicity. Maybe that can be done in other, other, some other time, maybe not today. And uh, lastly, we will see as an application of this room of hyperbolicity of uh, small cancellation groups. Okay, so, Curvature formula. Uh, last time we saw that uh, we can we can get a tiling uh, of a diagram extending uh, consolidating the edges, which are which are not uh, vertices. I mean, consolidating the vertices which are uh, intermediate vertices as such, where where degrees are two essentially. So something like. something like this, where you have a vertex like this, and where you do not have other faces meeting or other edges coming in. So if you have something like this, then you can extend this to one edge like this. So that is uh, essentially what we call consolidating edges. And uh, by doing that, suppose we get a to complex from the Van Kampen diagram, and uh, that is done by consolidating edges. And suppose T is a finite two complex obtained that way, whose underlying space is a disk, <clears throat> and then uh, degree of a of a vertex V in that. Uh, in that two complex T is the number of oriented edges uh, starting at that vertex V. Okay, so now, okay. yes. Uh, T is uh, just a disk, right? Sorry? T, T. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, topologically T is a disk, yes. Okay, okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So, you can have the disk tiled with uh, different two cells. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is how, if it is not tiled with further two cells, you do not have any interior vertices, right? So. Right. Right. Okay. So, you no know, degree of a vertex is uh, the number of oriented edges starting at that point. Now, you remember that uh, we said, suppose we have some, some diagram like this, and suppose we have something like this. Here, we may have had 
smaller edges in the sense uh, edges labeled by letters, but we have consolidated them to to get an edge in that sense. Now at this point, because at all these points the the degree is two, so we extend the degree two vertices. Uh, we consolidate those edges. Now at this this vertex. It, you cannot consolidate it any further, right? Because it is greater than two. That means uh, you cannot have anything from outside. So it is not two means at least something has come from inside, right? So at least you have another relator, another two cell coming in there. At least it can be more than three. So that kind of a situation, uh, we will be having so and in the interior we can we can have many more relators coming in at one one vertex and so that's the degree and degree of a face is the number of edges making up delta d so there is a confusion with the cursor uh, do you see the cursor moving like this uh, I'm moving the cursor. Is it visible? No. No. Is it visible now? Is this is cursor this cur the, cursor on the slide you are saying, right? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 it's not. You can't see the cursor moving, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Even now you can't see. No. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know what is the problem, but anyway, uh, I was pointing things with the cursor, but anyway. Uh, so now the degree of a face, if if we have, su suppose, just one moment. So if we have a disc like this, and suppose we have a, we have a interior face like this. So now having an interior face, you see, we we have consolidated all the edges to to these things, which are essentially our pieces. That means if we have now, if we have these edges, that means so at this point. I've, I would not have drawn it like this if there was uh, the, ver the, ver the degree of the vertex was not greater than two. So otherwise I would have uh, extended again that age, right? So now having a face like this and uh, all these sides, so why am I calling it a degree? Because degree of the face, because uh, in some sense, if we, so what is happening is we have other say we want other faces coming in and meeting at those edges, right? So so <clears throat> and this number will be closely related to the uh, to the small cancellation coefficient because you see that uh, when I'm saying the presentation satisfies condition CP, then uh, we cannot have uh, less than p such such sides for the interior face. So the degree of an interior of a face is just the number of edges making up delta b. Edges b mean consolidated edges. So delta so delta b is this, and the number of edges that you have in in, in that. So why we are calling it a degree? Because if we look at the, uh, say the dual graph, if we, if we take a vertex for each two cell and uh, put an edge between two such vertices, when they share an edge, then I will get a vertex for this edge and I will, uh, sorry, this face, and I will get another vertex for this face. Uh, so in that case, I can join these two vertices with an edge. So in that way, I will have these vertices and I will have so five edges here. 
coming out of this vertex. So that that somehow uh, is the reason behind calling it a degree. And now E of B is the number of exterior edges. Suppose I have uh, this diagram and I have a face like this. So if I have a face like this uh, and uh, so here I have one exterior edge and three interior edges, right? So E of this will be one and I of this, uh, this face B would be three. So <clears throat> now V, E and F are the vertices, edges and faces, uh, number of vertices, edges and faces in T, T is my diagram. And the, the total number of edges making up uh, delta D, what is D, D is the disk, right? So we were, all, so all this time we were looking at DB, the number of edges for a face. So DD is the total number of edges. So they are essentially uh, exterior edges. <clears throat> Right. So now you see, uh, having having said all this, introduced all these terms, uh, let us uh, see the the count of uh, edges. Uh, <clears throat> so in this finite complex, D is the underlying disk. Now for a disk, we have the Euler characteristic one, so we can write down the equation like one is V minus E plus F. And uh, the, these are two other countings. Uh, and why do we get them like this? See, if we have an interior vertex, uh, see if we have a vertex V. <coughs> so at that vertex, so we are, we are uh, now kind, uh, counting the number of edges. So E is the number of edges, right? So for each edge, we have two vertices and points. And for both of them, we are counting all the, all the oriented edges. Those are coming in and going out, right? So the number of edges at one vertex, if we uh, consider incident at one vertex, and if we sum them up for all the vertices that we have. So essentially for, for each edge, we are uh, counting it twice, right? For two endpoints. So the number of edges would be this sum divided by two. So we have this equation, uh, 2e is summation dv. And uh, 2e is uh, also, summation of so t uh, e is what e is the total number of edges in t so now if we look at a uh, face b then what is d of b d of b is the number of faces that b has now if we consider an edge suppose uh, Suppose this is this is a face B, and and it has uh, it has these edges, and now if it is an interior face, you can see that. Uh, on, on each of these edges, there are other faces coming in, right? So other faces are adjacent. So if I am taking the summation of DB over all faces, then this edge is being counted for both B and B1. So this edge, this edge is being counted for both B and B1, right? <clears throat> now, what happens when a uh, when a face B is, it has uh, exterior edges. So when a face B is like this, 
then you see that all these interior edges that uh, interior edges that B has, they have adjacent. These interior edges have adjacent uh, faces, not necessarily interior faces, but they have adjacent faces. Those faces can also have exterior edges. So all these edges are similarly counted twice for both B and B1, the neighboring faces. But what happens to the exterior edge? The exterior edge uh, that B has. Now, see what, uh, what is D of capital D? That was the number of edges that we had on delta D. So if this entire disk is D, then delta D is the number of edges we have, exterior edges that we have in this diagram, only exterior edges. So just uh, since uh, this sum is uh, not giving us the remaining exterior edges, we have added this DD to this uh, sum so that it becomes two times the number of edges because uh, for all the interior edges, we were counting twice. For the exterior edge, we have to add it one more time. So we added DD, so we have this equation. Okay, so we have this much now. <clears throat> so what we will be trying is, we'll be trying to uh, simplify uh, these equations keeping in mind that our, our uh, presentation SR satisfies different small cancellation conditions. And in this case, we are considering small cancellation conditions, CP and TQ together. So <clears throat> suppose if we have <clears throat> the small cancellation conditions, CP and TQ for PQ 6, 3, 4, 4, and 3, 6, uh, now you observe that for all these pairs, uh, we have this, this identity. So <clears throat> now these pairs satisfy this. Now, if we want to eliminate E from these equations and uh, simplify it, we will get, uh, so we can, so what we did here is we multiplied this with P and uh, we got, uh, PE and for uh, we replaced PE by so essentially here we replaced it by uh, it's like uh, PE would be P by two times this and then we will further uh, we will keep uh, replacing all these things suitably so that finally we get uh, this expression that uh, <clears throat> so what we do is, uh, yeah, we can further uh, introduce all this uh, in, instead of uh, writing just summation dv, we can we can replace it with with this uh, equation because two e is uh, summation dv, so summation dv over v is summation dv uh, plus dd, and hence uh, by doing all these. Uh, replacements we what we finally get is <clears throat> so what we finally get is this this expression uh, shall we elaborate on that or is it okay Is the uh, equality? Uh, is there any question regarding this this formula? This uh, expression that we have here, p is uh, p is this. Okay, I can uh, I can write it down here, but uh, it's very thin. I don't know how much it will be visible. Uh, anyway, so I can further elaborate this. See what we have so far is P is P V minus P by two summation D V 
over V plus P F, right? So what we can do to that is uh, in place of P by two, you see that is P by Q plus one. So we can do P V minus, uh, so we can replace it by P by Q plus one summation T V plus P F. <coughs> And that we can uh, make P V minus P by Q D V minus D V plus P F, right? So uh, then we can club these things and and make it uh, say P V minus P by Q summation D V minus and in this place in this summation D V's place what we can bring in is uh, you see that uh, we had. 2e as summation dv and 2e as summation this so we can we can bring in all of them so we can write summation db over p plus d d plus p f right so <clears throat> now you see that uh, we can simplify it we cannot see the cursor so we can write it as say, p by q uh, so this number v what is v v is the number total number of uh, v is the total number of vertices that we have in the entire diagram right so we can we can just do a p by q times q v and that is that can be replaced by so q v can be written as summation q over v right right and so I write PV as this and minus summation over V DV. And then I have, <coughs> I can write it as plus PF minus summation DV over B and then minus d d right so what what do i want i want uh, this kind of an expression right so what is f what is f f is the total number of f is the total number of faces that we have in the entire diagram right so what are b's b's are the faces right so what we can do essentially is uh, we can further write it this way p and take the sum outside p by q sum over v uh, this is q minus dv and then uh, we keep this thing just like this so we have got this much and then we have pf minus db right so what is pf what can we write about so pf we can write the summation over p p because f is what summation one over p so what we can write here is minus db and then that is p by q summation q minus tv 
minus d d plus summation over p sorry summation over b p minus d b so essentially that is what we are getting <clears throat> so this is just a, a easy form for the further uh, use and uh, there's no other reason that uh, we are looking at it in this way. So P is uh, decomposed in this manner, you can say. And then uh, we see that uh, for, uh, for different P and Qs, we are getting different. Uh, so if we apply this, if we, if we replace P and Q by six and three, four and four, three and six respectively, then we get uh, other uh, other specialities on these uh, from these equations and uh, some other specific quantities with uh, involving the interior uh, edges and the exterior edges, those things, they appear in this uh, expression. And finally, so I'm not going into that uh, detail here, so that will be done during the tutorial and uh, then applying those things uh, here what we can finally state is that uh, if p and q are these things uh, p and q are these three pairs then if we take v to have degree at least three all the interior and all the interior vertices will have degree at least q interior faces will have degrees at least p so you can understand what the, they are saying right so interior vertices having degree at least q what does that resemble what what does that mean it means tq interior face having degree at least p what does that mean it means cp right <clears throat> and here they are talking about v's here v means uh, any v right so so we do not have so if a v is interior you can see if, a, if i take this v suppose then it has already more than uh, so at least three edges at this now i can have a, an exterior v but at an exterior v if we have degree two we have already consolidated so it can have degree at least three, right? So all our vertices in the diagram will have degree at least three. Because otherwise, they have been consolidated if it has degree, say, two. <clears throat> now, in that, is, that kind of a situation, what uh, further analysis from further uh, use of this equation in these cases what it gives us is this inequality and this inequality is uh, called the curvature inequality and uh, this will be useful for our our uh, further results that we will be talking about so any questions so far Okay, then uh, let us go to the next part, which is the decision problems, essentially the dense algorithm. And what we want to talk about here is how to essentially, uh, how to solve a decision problem, namely the, the word problem on a certain class of groups. What uh, Den did is uh, he he solved the word problem on surface groups. So what he did on the surface groups is he considered reduced, freely reduced, non-trivial words uh, which are relators. I mean, which equal to one. That means they're relators, right? So 
freely reduced non-trivial word is equal to one. That means it is a relator. And we know what the relator, uh, what relators are in pi one of sigma. So here pi one of sigma is, so <clears throat> suppose sigma is sigma g. So pi one of sigma g is a one b one a two b two a g b g and the related is a one b one a two b two a g b g. So in this group what he observed is that if you take a non-trivial word which is a relator that is it is an element from the normalizer of this word so essentially what we are looking at is f of a1 b1 to a g b g and we are looking at a word w from let's call that set uh, to be S. So if W is an element from FS <coughs> such that, so if W is an element from the normal subgroup generated by A1, B1 up to A, G, B, G, which is a subgroup of Fs. If omega is a freely reduced non-trivial word like that, then it contains more than half of a defining relator. So what does that mean? It means if you are omega, sorry, w, <clears throat> and uh, w bar is equal to 1, right? So, w such that w bar is equal to 1, that means it's here, then we will have a sub word. Bruto. Yes. Maybe you can just uh, hold your pencil. Uh, I I am unable to uh, find that thing. I uh, I also wanted to do that. It's very difficult to see it, even for so myself. So just beside the pencil, you see a arrow mark. Right? This thing, right? Uh -huh. What is this? No, I, I I checked there. It is just uh, different types of uh, pencil heads, like dotted, dashed, etc. Uh, okay. Let me. Check. Uh, I don't know if uh, others can have any idea. Tick, tick, tick. Uh, okay, thick, thick, thick. Yes, yes. Let's see. No, that is something else. I guess I don't know. Is it? Uh, is it? No, no. It's it's that. It's it's fine. I think it's better. Much better. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, so. Yeah, so if W is a relator, that is W uh, bar is one, then what we get is we can find a sub word, say, can call it U, such that W contains more than half of a defining relator, at least one. So that means, so what does that mean? It, it contains a defining relator, mind it. So, <clears throat> W is a relator. That means it is part of something, some other thing like this. Right? Uh, this picture is, this picture is actually bad. Uh, let me not draw it like this. So what I mean, let, let me redraw the picture. That is the basis of the algorithm that uh, if I have uh, 
word w like this then i can i will have a sub word so that sub word is part of a relator contains more than half of a defining relator suppose this is another relator call it uh, r then this is u and suppose this is v then what can you say about r r is u v and uh, what it is saying is that it contains more than half of a defining relator so this is that and what can you say about so this is essentially saying this okay so what does that mean and why is that uh, important we will come to the word problem and conjugacy problem i mean we won't be talking much about them uh, we just want to solve the word problem for c prime 16 groups and uh, we'll see how how to do that and uh, this is essentially the key step and what is that so if i uh, can find a sub word u inside w such that u figures in a relator like this so here r is an element let's let's call it smaller so so if i find a u like this what can i do i can i can replace u with v uh, maybe still better picture would be if i have a, a relator like this this if this is w and uh, suppose this part is u and if i can find another relator say r such that r is u r is uv and this is greater than v then i can simply replace v uh, replace u by v without essentially changing the word right i am essentially simplifying isn't it is that uh, is that understandable what i am doing is i am trying to reduce w w is a relator it may not be the shortest relator in its class so i can further shorten w without changing its class so v or v inverse v inverse sorry yeah v inverse v inverse yeah so i can replace u by v inverse right yes yes and by replacing it by v inverse what am i doing essentially i am shortening the i'm shortening this right so the the new uh, description for u uh, for w that i'm getting let's call that omega uh, say w1 then w1 is smaller than this right and and if i can prove this fact say in general so if it was a random sub word that may or may not exist then i cannot uh, iterate this process now if i know that whenever i will have a relator which is trivial uh, i mean which is always trivial a relator so when i have a relator then i will always get a sub word which is part of some other relator having this as a prefix 
and this prefix is more than half of that other relator, then I can always shorten this. So that way, having started with a W, I can always go to a W1 if W is not the shortest possible, right? Is that fine? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that is what was essentially Dent's observation. And what he did is he devised an algorithm which is essentially finding such a subword and then replacing it by V inverse and shortening it further and further until it is the shortest, right? So <clears throat> then, uh, so if this is uh, an algorithm, suppose I can run it on any given relator, then uh, I can decide, right, whether it uh, is a trivial word in the given presentation or, an, or not a trivial word, right? So if it is a trivial word, then I can always uh, go into the symmetrized set, right? Otherwise, so it is essentially giving me a passage from the normal subgroup generated by R by reducing it further and further to R, right? So essentially that is what it is telling me. So uh, where will this process end so that I can say it is a identity? So if it is, uh, if it is not we are reducing uh, the size and uh, yeah, so, so there are two possibilities, right? So what it is essentially saying is either with what you start, you are already in uh, R star or the symmetrized set. That is not the normal subgroup, right? No, that is not the normal. Yeah. Otherwise, you are you, you are already starting with some element from the normal subgroup. So either you are in R. If you are not, then you will have something like this, where you can further shorten it. That is what it is saying essentially. This observation. So this algorithm will go up to length of... So we will come to the algorithm. We'll come to the algorithm. So there are other things before the algorithm. So... so what I'm saying is oh, that this process... Oh, actually, this has been repeated. Okay, sorry. Yeah. What I'm saying, uh, uh, so replacing u by b, mm -hmm. so then again you continue this. Hmm. Okay, so it will continue up to length of w. Yes. So if it continues up to length of W, so then it will represent the end of so You see that, uh, I mean, all these representations, I mean, all these, uh, I, I started with a W, I found a U, then I replaced it with V inverse. That is what I'm doing. Now in the group, if I look at, in the quotient group, they are in the same class, essentially. Right? They are the same elements in the quotient group. Right? Right. Yes or no? Yes. Now you see that suppose an element is one. Suppose an element is trivial. Then I can reduce it further and further and further up to an empty wall. Yes or no? Yes, yes. Right? So, uh, and I, I will have a notion of something called a den reduced word. I mean, something which I uh, obtain after applying this process, uh, say finitely many times because I have a finite uh, word. So I will know after a finitely many iterate, iteration of this process, whether this, is, this can be further shortened or not, right? And if it can be further shortened, then uh, uh, I will 
I will do that. And if finally I get an empty word in that process, I will say that this is the unit element. Yes. yes. Right. And if I don't, then it is not. Right. So uh, that is essentially the algorithm, what it talks about. But uh, we don't have exactly that situation because, uh, I mean, we have a very similar situation, maybe an exactly similar situation, because we see that pi one of sigma g is a small cancellation group, right? Now, uh, this, is, this observation of den was generalized by various people uh, in combinatorial group theory side later on. One of the main results in that direction was by Greenlinger, who said that uh, what is true for what is true for pi one of sigma g is true for uh, a c prime one sixth group in general. It may not be a surface group, but even then, this fact is true. So that is what we call the uh, Greenlinger lemma. Now, uh, what uh, Den uh, said is uh, that, uh, so these are the decision problems which were uh, talked about by Max Den. And what he said is uh, given, a, given a word, decide whether or not it is trivial. Given, uh, given two words, decide whether or not they are conjugate. So we won't say anything about uh, conjugacy problem and even for the word problem we are not going into the details of it we're just saying that the word problem is solvable for hyperbolic groups why uh, because we will uh, so not in general we are saying the word problem is solvable but for uh, small cancellation groups for hyperbolic groups it's a different thing it's a more complicated thing we are saying that the word problem is uh, solvable for small cancellation groups. Okay, so uh, yeah, this led to the dense algorithm and uh, for the solvability of decision but problems. Uh, yeah. But he also has some example about uh, C prime lambda where lambda is greater than one pi may have a solvable word problem, right? We may have. So this is a sufficient condition. Okay. Okay. And in, in case of same hyperbolic case also, I mean, uh, if lambda is greater than or equal to one by six. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, lambda is less than or equal to one by six, then C prime lambda is hyperbolic, right? Yes. And if it is greater than one by six, then we may have some hyperbolic group or. We we may have, I guess. Uh, I don't know the answer. I can't answer it right now. But my guess is uh, I think we have uh, other type of groups as well. Oh, what uh, I will, uh, so he's uh, he's asking essentially are all the hyperbolic groups C prime one sixth. Oh. Uh, I cannot answer that right now. No, no, I, that should not be true as I, I mean. Uh, yeah, but I cannot right away find a presentation which is uh, I mean of a hyperbolic group which is not C prime one sixth. But, but, uh, yes. Yeah, so I can think about it and uh, come back to you later. Okay, okay, fine. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so the um, one of the most important thing in this context is that this algorithm can be uh, run on small cancellation groups as well. And uh, what does that mean? That means that if you start with a 
if you start with a cyclically reduced word in a small cancellation group that is that represents a trivial element then w has a subword just just this what we have stated so far that it will have a subword which is, which appears in another defining relator and mod u is greater than mod v that is mod u is greater than half of that other relator where it appears so since it is greater than half we will replace it with the with the inverse so uh, why does that happen why do we have that essentially uh, see the proof is uh, i will not go to the very minute details of the proof but uh, outline of the proof is so such a word will give me a den diagram uh, sorry at van kampen diagram right and uh, essentially we will analyze the diagram to say whether or not we will have a subword like that fine so if we have suppose a uh, c prime 16th group and uh, i take a word like that which is uh, which gives me a trivial element in the quotient <coughs> then uh, if i can find a uh, inside the van kampen diagram of this word if i can find a sub diagram which is already uh, which is a single phase i mean a single two cell uh, so that it's uh, so that the boundary sub path of that is is <clears throat> starting and ending at the base point of the diagram then we have already that subword inside inside uh, see r and the boundary path of that we have to check whether or not that is greater than the 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 remaining part of it so what we essentially have to do is we have to construct a sub diagram we have to find a sub diagram uh, if at all that exists where we will have that sub word u appearing with uh, just like this picture so here we had this van kampen diagram we had this sub word we had to finally find a phase where this subword appears as the as one part of the boundary right essentially that happened so if this is a situation if this is the situation that in this starting from this diagram suppose this is a van kampen diagram corresponding to w and in this diagram if we can find a phase b like that where the boundary of b is uv and u gives me more than half of the boundary right so if that kind of a situation i can achieve then i will uh, replace i can replace u by v inverse that is what essentially we are looking for right yes right yeah so now how can we find a be like that now the rough argument goes like this that if we uh, so we already know that uh, curvature formula that we have talked about now if we so in our situation as well this curvature formula will be valid and now we can use the curvature formula to say that since the formula is p is less than some quantity what is the quantity it's p by q plus 2 minus the number of interior faces of b over over all b's for which the exterior edges are one so suppose this is 
this is an exterior edge, right? So since we are we are finding subwords of see exterior edge of B is one means what? If there was a so if E of B is not equal to one, what will happen? So there will be another exterior edge, so to say, right? And in that case, what will happen? Since uh, if there was some other uh, edges incident, then uh, it will have, so it, it will not be B as such, right? This entire thing cannot be B if there was another, uh, another edge coming in, right? So if there is no other edge coming in, then the degree of this vertex will be two, and then I can consolidate it to one, right? So essentially where it boils down to is taking the sum over only those edges, which has number of exterior edge. So those faces, which has one exterior edge. So we can get rid of, so that we can get rid of such situations. So now this B has an exterior edge uh, and we are trying to find this B with that interior edge, with one or more interior edges. So this can have more uh, edges, right? <clears throat> Now the thing is that P is less than this. Now you see that uh, here on the right hand side, uh, so this number has, since this right hand side is greater than P, so there has to be at least two edges, which makes it more than P by two, right? So that it, it becomes bigger than that. So in that, sense so if if these quantities are positive and these right hand side quantities and they are greater than p by 2 they are at least two i mean if it has to be because uh, the sum is greater than p then there are at least two such faces which has positive uh, this expression where this expression is positive does this make sense See, a face B, sorry, a face B will have two types of edges. And the number of EB is number of exterior edges and IB is the number of interior edges, right? Right? Does it make sense? Sorry. So now this right-hand side expression since the right hand side expression cannot be more than p by 2 and that that comes from where so what is the interior edge what is the interior edge of b how many interior edges can b have how many interior edges can b have it's 2 q sorry 2 q interior vertex has degree no, that is a vertex. I'm saying a, a face, face. Interior, how many interior edges can B have? B is a face. So, uh, I mean, I know that it uh, has to, so it, the words are concatenation of at least P of them, right? If it, it was entirely an interior face, then there were P sides. Right. Right. And uh, we also know that uh, that uh, P by Q plus one is P by two, right? Right. So P by Q plus one is P by two. And uh, just a moment. So 
given that b can uh, all the interior faces can have at most p sides this expression can be can be at least p by 2 uh, why is that just a moment Ah, yes, right. So uh, you see that uh, B, I have taken all those Bs which has exterior edge 1, right? Now, if it has one exterior edge, it can have at least, it should have at least one interior edge, right? Right? So, it can have more, it can have interior edges, two, three or more, but at least it will have one interior edge, right? A face in this expression. So if it has one interior edge, what happens to this expression? It becomes uh, P plus Q plus two minus one, right? And in that case, it becomes P plus Q by uh, P plus Q plus one, so two minus one. So then p plus q plus 1 is p by 2, right? So this quantity, whatever be your uh, face b, it will have at least one interior edge. Otherwise, it is not at all a face in this diagram, right? So it cannot have the all the all the faces uh, sorry, all the edges exterior, then it will be, uh, it will, its boundary will be a subset of the entire uh, diagram that is delta M and it will not have any other vertex inside. So then the entire disk has to be, entire diagram has to be one disk, one disk in the sense one, two cell. So that is not the case. So it has at least one interior edge and then this expression is at least p by 2. Now, if it is at least p by 2 and this expression is greater than p, then there has to be at least two such faces, right? So there will be at least two such faces which will, uh, which will appear in the right-hand side, right? Now, if you uh, if you take one of them, and if you uh, if you look at the boundary path of that, just like this situation, just look at this situation. So here you are looking at such a face which has one exterior edge. It can have one or more interior edges, and now you are looking at its boundary path, and uh, where you so there will exist a face like that that is for sure right there will exist a face like that because of this inequality and now if you take one such face and you start tracing the boundary of that face in that boundary you will have say at least one or more right how many interior faces do you have either at least one or it you could have more Right? Right, so uh, you will find a, you will find a, find the boundary path of this diagram. And this, uh, this level will be a sub path of, uh, of that, uh, of that boundary, say, call that boundary path to be P. And that boundary path, if you if you trace the boundary path, you see that the other, this remaining part of that boundary diagram. So that can be, say, you can divide that in how many parts. Because uh, if you have, say, different edges here 
that means you have another phase here say b1 b2 b3 and so on right now how many such paths can you how many such uh, segments can you have in that v part you understand so i am trying to estimate what that v part is right and uh, if I can show that that V part is uh, its length is less than the length of the U part, then I can uh, show that I can replace U with V inverse, right? Right. So now that we know that uh, what are we given? We are given that uh, this satisfies say. Suppose we assume that we have C prime one by P. Suppose we uh, assume that we have C prime one by P condition satisfied. And then we can say that, uh, we can say that we, the length of that kind of a V will be, uh, product of pieces, right? So how many such pieces can we have? We can have at most P by Q plus one pieces. So if we if we have P by Q plus one many pieces there, so in that case, uh, and the group satisfies C prime one by P, that means whichever relator it may appear in that piece may appear into the length of that those pieces will be less than the length of the relator by p right so this v will be concatenation of pieces that's the first thing how many such pieces can we have p by q plus one that's at, uh, at least uh, sorry at most p by q plus one because uh, at least B will have one interior edge, right? So at most P by Q plus one uh, edges, uh, pieces we can have there. So V will be concatenation of pieces. That's the first thing. How many such pieces will appear? At most P by Q plus one. Okay. And how much is one piece length? That is the one by p of the length of the relator at most right because it is length of a piece uh, is bounded by uh, the length of the relator so length of a piece will be bounded by one by p times the length of the relator and what is the relator here i am looking at i am looking at something like uv right so the length of a piece will be uv by p right bounded by and how many pieces are coming? P by Q plus one. So what will be the length of V? V will be concatenation of P by Q plus one pieces. And each piece has length at most UV by P. So the length of V will be bounded by P by Q plus one times UV by P, right? And what is that? So that is U V by Q plus U V by P. That is one by Q plus one by P times U V. Okay, so here is a uh, thing that we need to take, and that is, uh, see, so we we need to take, uh, so in, in all these cases, what do we have? One by Q, one by three plus one by six, and that is, uh, say, so in all these cases, it was half, right? Yes. Right. So 
we can say that this is this right and what does that say it says this right so what we are essentially saying uh, after all this is that if we start with a relate uh, if we start with a subword uh, sorry if we start with a word w and uh, we have to find a subword u such that that subword appears in a relator so we are not constructing it we are using this uh, inequality and saying that since uh, this sum is taken over uh, exterior ages having one exterior age and the face should have at least one interior age and having one interior age poses all these restrictions and uh, the all these individual terms at least two such uh, disc uh, two such faces will appear so that the sum becomes greater than p because each of them are bounded by p by 2 and so on so now we get such a face and we also get that the other other segment of the face is uh, its length is bounded by this because there will be p by q plus 1 concatenation of pieces at most and it will have uh, and all of them will have length uh, mod u v by p at most so mod v will be bounded by this and uh, that that gives us uh, mod v will be bounded by uh, this thing say u v by 2 and uh, that is the length of r by 2 what the <clears throat> what does that tell us it tells us this is greater than this if mod v is less than this then mod u is greater than this right so this proof is not telling us exactly which face it will be but it is telling us that if we have a diagram there has to be a face like this so that is it we get a face where which is uv and where uh, mod u is greater than half of the relator and we uh, replace u by v inverse and uh, that is essentially it's not exactly the greenlinger lemma but it is a special case of the greenlinger lemma greenlinger lemma is a little more uh, general in nature and it gives us more precise uh, estimates of the of those subwords and length, length of those subwords what exactly they can be i mean and how many of them there should be so the greenlinger's lemma gives us uh, in fact a more uh, precise estimate of those subwords and the number of subwords so that is not required for us uh for for showing the showing hyperbolicity and all so this version uh, this more simplistic version of greenlinger lemma is enough and uh, this is a sort of a broad outline of the proof of this greenlinger lemma and now we see that <clears throat> having having achieved this uh, property we can apply sorry uh, that's a repetition we can apply a uh, dense algorithm right and uh, what is the dense algorithm uh, dense algorithm is uh, so what we do is we search for this kind of subwords right which is uh, part of a defining relator so that this happens so if we can find that then what we do is we replace it by v inverse and freely reduce that so after we replace it with v inverse there could be some possible uh, cancellations so we freely reduce so then we uh, we call that <coughs> new word w1 and there in g these two are equivalent right but it is a shorter word right 
so in this way we can we can construct uh, we can iterate this process and uh, by repeated application of these two things we can construct this sequence and all of these are equivalent in g and in each further step we are getting a shorter word right so uh, now at most uh, number uh, at most w many steps we can we can iterate right so at most mod w number of such reductions will uh, lead to the empty word right right is that fine so we can so at each step by virtue of greenlinger lemma we know that we have such a sub word now mind it there is something nice happening here that each time we find a subword like that we also find a complementary subword which is less but also we are finding a defining relator so essentially step 1 r1 is give, giving us a defining relator and what does that mean that means it gives us a face b right correct is that is that uh, understood that at each step we are reducing w uh, sorry reducing w replacing u with v inverse we are finding a face of the diagram right and how many times at the most we can iterate this process we can iterate the process these many times at the most if we if we iterate it these many times it will lead us to the empty word right so it is actually doing two things together one thing is uh, what is written here in r4 that at most number w such reduction mod w such reductions will either lead to an empty word one giving a proof that w is one in g so we started with some word and we ended up in one in g or it it will lead us to another word w hat which cannot be shortened further right just uh, what i told a few minutes back that uh, so den reduced word which cannot be further shortened right den reduced if it becomes empty then it is one if it is den reduced and it cannot be shortened further then uh, it's not empty then it is not trivial so what it is saying essentially is it's solving the word problem right fine now what other thing is it doing that how many times at the most we can uh, iterate this mod w times right each iteration we are finding uh, we are finding a b like this right each iteration we are finding a b like this right so here in our situation we have already started with a relator right and we knew that a relator is trivial isn't it yes or no so relator is giving me one right right in the in the kelly complex it gives me that uh, van kampen diagram and that van kampen diagram we can reduce on, uh, along this sequence and it at each stage we are reducing the length of those words right how how many times can i iterate mod w times each iterate what am i getting i am finding at and at each iterate i am deleting one such face right i'm deleting a face b because if i replace u by v inverse then i'm replacing uh, b i'm i'm deleting b from the van kampen diagram isn't it right yes yes so at each stage i'm deleting one face and how many times can i repeat that uh, process i mean how many times at most can i delete a face mod w times right so now if i ask this question that how many faces 
did I have in the first place in the Van Kampen diagram? How many faces did I have in the Van Kampen diagram to start with? What would be the answer to that question? Can we say that how many faces the Van Kampen diagram had in the beginning? Because at each stage, I am reducing it, right? By one. At each stage, I am removing a face. And how many times I am iterating this? At most, mod W times. So how many faces did I delete? How many faces did I delete? At most mod W faces, right? And what kind of a word did I start with? A word which is a relator. That means if W is a relator, W bar is one in the quotient group, right? Right? W bar is one in the quotient. That means in this, I mean, if I run the del dense algorithm on this word, I should definitely end at empty word, isn't it? Yes. Right? That means I must have removed all the faces. If I end up at the empty word, do I have any further face? No, no. No. So I had started with some number of faces. I have iterated the DEN algorithm on this diagram. At the end, I do not have any face. And how many times did I iterate this algorithm, this process? Mod W times. And in mod W times, I have uh, deleted all the faces that diagram had. So again, I go back to my initial question. How many faces at the most did I have in my Van Kampen diagram? In fact, mod w minus one. Yes, you can uh, say uh, uh, why did you say mod w minus one? Uh, suppose I deleted each face one at a one, time. One is conformer. That's why. But suppose I had mod w faces. Uh, is that uh, good? Mod W is a, yeah, I mean, uh, is a... And suppose I had mod W faces and uh, in each uh, step I, uh, okay, uh, yeah, 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 so. Um, mod W can, is a I safe estimate, have, yeah. It's a safe estimate and I can have, in fact, much less number of iterates and I can, yes. at the most I can, so see, I'm not reducing the length by one at a time, right? I can also yeah, we are reducing much more, much more, right? So uh, yeah, you that way you are saying uh, mod w minus one. Yeah. I guess. We are reducing at least r by two. Yeah, Number so minimum of the length of the let, uh, related we can take, and yeah, yeah we can I do that. Think that uh, can be done. Yes. So I, I have to think a bit uh, for to be sure, but uh, it seems like it is. Uh, I cannot say right now, but uh, at most mod W, uh, many faces are there that much we can say, right? Yes, yes. yes. Fine. Now, uh, if I define something called an area of the Van Kampen diagram, the Van Kampen diagram M, what will be the area? Okay, so sorry. Uh, if I define the area as the number of faces it has, then uh, what can I say about the area? 
at most mod w at most mod w and that is something we will have for c prime one sixth groups as linear isoperimetric inequality so what is uh, so a combinatorial area for the van kampen diagram is the number of two cells it has okay and the and the boundary area is mod w here w not we have written so now what is the linear isoperimetric inequality a linear isoperimetric inequality tells us that the area of the of the diagram is bound I and mean, there there will exist a c such that the area of the diagram will be at most c times mod w okay if that happens for certain c then we can say that the the presentation satisfies linear isoperimetric inequality now from the previous discussion we can readily see that uh, for this diagram the area is at most mod w mod w not here right that that uh, right away tells us that the presentation satisfies linear isoperimetric inequality and <clears throat> by uh, by an equivalent characterization of gromov hyperbolicity so i i guess gromov hyperbolic groups are uh, introduced uh, right so uh, you have uh, studied boundaries and other things also so uh, we all know what gromov hyperbolic groups are and an equivalent characterization for gromov hyperbolic groups says that uh, this kind of finite presentation satisfying linear isoperimetric inequality i mean a group satisfying linear isoperimetric inequality is gromov hyperbolic so we can say c prime 16 groups are gromov hyperbolic right uh, there is a there is another proof of gromov hyperbolicity for c prime 16 groups as well by showing thinness directly not using this equivalent criteria by showing thinness uh, of the geodesic triangles uh, directly from analyzing the geodesic paths in the in the kelly graph and uh, i am not sure whether i will talk about that later if i have some time i can give a brief outline of the entire process the proof is uh, long but the proof idea is nice so i will try at the end if i have time to outline the proof the direct proof of gromov hyperbolicity for c prime 16 groups okay uh, that is all for today thank you uh, any question any question if not uh, then i think uh, vijinda has left okay so i am stopping uh, okay thank you <laughs>